For years now, college and university libraries have been on the front lines of the information revolution, struggling to keep up with constantly evolving technologies and skyrocketing subscription prices. I've personally seen card catalogs give way to microfiche, microcomputer, and now web-based search. And of course, physical books, which are being used less and less by undergraduate students, are being moved into underground or off-site storage, if they're being kept at all. Most campus libraries have been renovated to serve very different purposes than the original architects envisioned just a few decades ago. What would a 21st century university library look like if you could build it from scratch with a hundred million dollar budget? Two years ago, Calgary's Mount Royal University got the chance to do just that with the Riddell Library and Learning Center. This week, Provost Leslie Brown and Dean of Libraries Megan Bowler show me their library for the 21st century. Let's take 10 and take a look. Welcome to another 10 with Ken. I'm Ken Steele. And this week we're at Mount Royal University in Calgary, Alberta. We're in the immersion studio of the almost new $100 million Riddell Library and Learning Center. And I'm joined by Megan Bowler, the Dean of Libraries. Thanks for taking some time. Thanks, Ken. To what extent did the announcement that Mount Royal was moving to university status trigger yeah. the need for a change in the library? I remember reading somewhere that someone called the old library woefully inadequate. Yes, and at the time it was a... Um, a vintage 1972 built, um, this large open space where, where we were able to kind of hammer in some stacks to house a collection, have a service desk where students could ask questions, a few computers and a classroom. And that was kind of the library we had and we knew that that wasn't going to support what our undergraduate students needed. We knew we would have to build our collections, we knew we'd have to expand our services, we knew that the information environment was changing in a, in a rapid way, and we'd need the technology and spaces to allow students to access that information. Leslie Brown is Mount Royal's Provost and Vice President Academic. The Riddell Library and Learning Centre is, is a facility, a building that we opened in 2017. It's a hundred million dollar spectacular space for learning, for discovery, for teaching. It is a very appealing kind of a centerpiece for campus right now. Yeah. I think that our students, when they walk in this building, are proud of their university. And when high school students and, and younger students come through, they see that this is a place of absolute support and possibility for learning. The building is home to much more than just a library. Our library probably occupies about two-thirds of this space. We also have a unit for student learning services. We have our Institute for the Scholarship of Teaching and Learning, our Department of Education. We also have our Academic Development Centre, which is a unit that serves our faculty to help ensure that their teaching practices are on the bleeding edge of excellence. Students have access to, to way more than they would if we were only a library. When you come through the doors of the Riddell Library and Learning Centre, you walk into a space that is so bright, so creative, so imaginative, that you feel inspired to learn. When we were planning this library, we knew that we were really pushing the boundaries of, of what we thought a library could be and what a library could do. So the building was designed to be progressively quieter as you go from floor one to floor four, and we're seeing that happen. Partly it's a function of the furniture we've got in there, partly it's a function of the zoning and the design of the space, but every space in here is really designed with learners in mind. It's a space that has been bustling with, with vibrancy, with inspiration, uh, and with life since we opened the doors. Um, I think we have 1,700 seats that students can work in and every one of them will be taken up on any given day. Certainly one of the things that's Striking and reassuring to me, I guess, as an introvert about this building is that absolute spectrum of spaces from the purely introverted library yeah. that I recognize to the much more social and extroverted spaces as well. Yeah. From the total introvert seats that look like a first-class airline pod, and then you've got those porch swing-like benches for two that are, again, somewhat acoustically baffled from the rest of the space. Yep. You've got clusters in lounge areas for two or three. You've got tables for, for larger discussions. The individual kind of open spaces have been super popular, but the collaboration rooms that we built, the students are absolutely loving those. We've got 34 of them in this library. They're bookable online or on the fly. You know, we're just hearing from students like, we'd like some more. 
like maybe double. So right, right. <laughs> we'll, we'll have to build the fifth and sixth floor, I guess, of collaboration rooms. It's, it's clear that, that students are social learners now and they work together across their devices, they work together by engaging in conversations and dialogue, and they work together visually by accessing and, and utilizing our white walls and our interactive resources. We knew that students weren't just consuming information. They needed space and technology to engage with it, to mobilize it, to create it, to hack it up, <laughs> to change it, and to share it with other people. But what's also evident is that there are also students who prefer that independence and who may be more sort of traditionalist in the, in the way that they learn. And so those students are accessing our, our traditional study carols. There's a cool space in yeah. this building that we walked mm -hmm. by downstairs called yeah. the Idea the Visualization I Lounge. The Ideas Lounge is what we... Oh, that's easier. That's the Ideas right? Lounge. Yeah, right. it was... That space contains a, a massive six screen by three screen touch enabled visualization wall. We imagine that could be used in a number of ways and across disciplines. What that wall lets users do uh, is engage with multiple inputs at one time. So you may be listening to an expert on one side of that wall talk about a piece of art, for example and then on the other side of that wall be, be looking really closely at a reproduction of that art piece. Uh, and then you might have a third input, which could be Twitter, where you're looking at the, the feeds related to that conversation. And there's also a classroom with similar technology in it, yeah. right? Yeah, that classroom, some of the similar applications, but it's designed to allow uh, instructors to have their classes in it full time. So to really engage with the technology and engage with the kinds of learning opportunities that that wall allows uh, with their classes. One of the exciting things for us to see is that we have faculty from across uh, departments and disciplines booking into that space. That's really why we, we envisioned having that in the library rather than say tucked away in a certain department or faculty. It allows us to kind of reach out across campus and let people know about the potential of that for teaching. So our library also has a small experience lab where we have drop-in hours that students and faculty can come in and can learn how to, to create simulations or modify them or use them in their uh, teaching or their learning. So Oculus, HoloLens. Yeah, all of those things. Virtual reality, mixed reality, augmented reality. It's been really neat to watch the uptake uh, from, our, from our faculty in particular, I think, with those technologies as they think about, oh, when I'm teaching, how could I incorporate some of those experiences for students to really uh, expand their thinking a little bit about what might be possible. We know that, that students are, or faculty are kind of looking beyond the, the research paper in their classroom and they're asking students to create other kinds of things, so other kinds of media. We've got uh, two audio suites that the library oversees where students can create audio. And our, our colleagues in the Academic Development Center have a, a couple of media production suites that students can have access to as well. Some of the eye-catching features of this building include this immersion studio that we're sitting in right now. Yep. So this allows groups of people to engage in a simulated environment. Maybe it will be a real place or an imagined place. So they can engage with a simulation, but they can also engage with each other. To do it justice, we'll devote an entire episode to the immersion studio later this month. And an episode to another popular feature, the Maker Studio. The library and, and some of the imaginative spaces that we have in here really reflect our priority for, for a general education. One of the spaces that I can think of that, that reflects that truly is our maker space. There's a certain kind of learning that happens when students take an idea and they make it into something that they can hold or make it into something tangible. The process of doing that it can be incredibly powerful. Where students, regardless of discipline, can come together and work independently or collaboratively to translate creative ideas uh, and make them come to life. The modern campus library serves as a central space for social and intellectual interaction. Many people would describe a library in a university as, as the heart of the university. From my perspective, I would describe the library as the interstitial space. It's a place that we can explore different practices for teaching, how to enhance learning. Libraries are, are places where we access information. It's a place where we engage with information, and it's also a place that helps us understand new information and learn. 
I think that's always been the case. Although we've been focusing on the physical buildings and some exciting new information technologies, ultimately, we can't ignore the human part of the equation, librarians themselves. It's complicated out there. It is a, it's a jungle out there in information land. So you, you need three things. You need space, you need resources, and you need expertise. And when you bring all of those three together, you create a library that has beautiful potential to provide a wide range of support across faculties, to students, to staff, to faculty, and to community. I asked Leslie and Megan what advice they would give to other institutions planning a library redevelopment. My advice would be to start with the students. Check in with your students, your faculty, your staff, community. What are they doing in their learning? And then ask yourself how your library can support that. Visit lots of other places and see what's being done. Uh, we looked at North Carolina State University, uh, UBC, the Irving K. Barber Library. Oh yeah. We looked at the U of C Taylor Family Digital Library just, just down the road, uh, University of Saskatchewan, University of Manitoba, many more. So we kept coming back to the fact that, that every campus needs its own unique library based mm. on the needs of their students. We've certainly taken bits and pieces from other places, but I think we've brought it together in a way that really aligns with our academic programs and with the mission of our university. Uh, my other advice would be to be bold. Be bold. To be visionary. And then always be looking to the future. You know, it's easy to, to think of libraries and think of what we know about libraries to be true and imagine a library with that in our minds. But what if we step back and what if we imagine libraries from the point of view of your learner first? And what if we asked that question every time we decided what technology do we need, what space do we need, what furniture do we need? It results in a library that, that is responsive and, and flexible and really supports the needs of our users. The one thing I know about working in a library is, is we will never be done changing. We will always be engaging in this process of imagining and changing based on what's going on around us. Thank you so much, Megan. All right. Hopefully, you found this quick tour of the Riddell Library and Learning Center as interesting as I did. Please click like so we'll know. Thanks again to Mount Royal University for hosting my visit and providing the videographers for these interviews. Next time on 10 with Ken, I sit down with Mount Royal's Maker Studio specialist, Carrie Harmer, to better understand why academic makerspaces are about much more than 3D printers. It's a place for students to make a mess. It's this exact same ideation process that you might go through to create a response for an essay or a paper that students are writing. The tools are just the output for the thinking that happens in the Maker Studio. To be sure you don't miss it, Take a moment now to subscribe wherever you caught this episode or at 10withken.com. Thanks for watching. Hey, Ken. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> this is Ken and Leslie Brown, uh, provost. Parker. How's that? Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm joined with, I'm joined by? This is, Sitting see, this is how I do. I'm so relieved right now. <laughs> 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 this week, the, plah. Good Actually, point. I want to say that all again. Can I say that all again? Absolutely. <laughs> I'm going to check my notes. Do you have any notes you have I to totally check? I totally want to check just... my notes. I feel yeah, like there's something do. I really want to say. I want to, want to make that. sure we cover some things here. <laughs> Although, we've Although we've been focusing on the physical buildings and saying. <laughs> Although we've been focusing on. Although we've been focusing on. We looked at. Can I check my notes for one second? <laughs> sure thing. <laughs> <laughs> the modern comp. Compass Library. The modem, modem. <laughs> okay. They've already cut the camera, right? Uh, <laughs> the camera may or may not be running. <laughs> it's not running. Thanks. Okay.